the Carabao Cup in the first round, second year in a flaming row, and uh, there was. I'm not going to lie. There was there was times where we showed signs of you know pressing and attack, and we weren't a walkover side. We did give Blackburn Rovers some some trouble today, but there is just specific moments in the game where we just weren't good enough, and there were specific. Um, players that didn't show enough today. Now, of course, this is the first competitive match in five months, so I'm not going to, you know, take everything with a pinch of salt. So, you know, we, we will pro probably improve in all this. Um, but, you know, I think today was the first indication where, you know, we've done good business, but we still need to bring in some squad depth. And it's so clear that squad depth is so important. Now... Um, I'm not going to do the whole half by half. I'm just going to tell you overall just a few key points. Then I'm going to share with you my player ratings today. And then give you guys some final thoughts. Um, there's a couple of specific players I could pick out for positive and negative reasons. First of all, I don't want to start with a negative, but I have to. Magic Gomez. Come on. I'm sorry. I know it's the first competitive match in like a few months, but come on. Magic Gomez, apart from that second half goal, which was absolutely beautiful, what else did he do? What else did he do in that game? Apart from a few good string of passes here and there, what else did he do in the game apart from that and the goal? He gave the ball away loads of times. You know, he clattered into his own plays on at least two occasions. I'm sorry, but that was just not good enough. And I don't that's the part of his game he needs to get rid of. And I said that Magic Gomez had an average season last season. There was t there was times where he was good, there was times where he was bad, and overall it was 50-50, it was average, it was poor at times. And again, it seems like some of those poor qualities from last season are starting to creep back into his system this season. And that game just exploited some of his worst plays. Magic Gomez just wasn't good enough today. Um... The goal, I'll give you, I'll give Magic Gomez credit for that. That goal was brilliant, um, but Magic Gomez just, just, just wasn't on it today. I don't know what it was. He just wasn't on it, and we brought Taylor off for Williams. I won't. I said, I said a half time. I was thinking a half time. I want Williams on for Gomez. Gomez wasn't good enough. He needs to come off at half time. You play 490 and you take Taylor off. Compared to Gomez, John Taylor actually had pace. He had uh, pressure. He could pressure the back line. He could show some pressure points. And I, t I spoke about his pace. He was pacing up and down a few times. He put a better shift in than Gomez, but he takes Gomez off to bring on Williams. And he played Williams on. I think somewhat like the right wing. I, I think that's what we were doing. Or he might have been playing Williams in the centre of midfield with Gomez and then bring um like Richards on the right wing. And then we brought Coppinger off for Amos. Uh, Amos needs game time, fair enough, but I would have taken off either Anderson Wright or Halliday. And I'd have played John as a right back, try and make him more versatile. Um because three of our back four that started got yellow cards. You know, I would take some of that back four out. Anderson and Wright didn't do too badly. They made, you know, a couple of little mistakes here and there, but nothing too noteworthy. Brad Halliday... <laughs> he did well. Don't get me wrong, he did well. But that foul on Amari Bell to give away the penalty that won them the game, for God's sake... I know you're taking one for the team. I know there was a couple of fouls where they took one for the team, but come on, not in the penalty spot. Just put a little leg in there, put like a little bit out of his touch to, you know, get rid of his rhythm, etc. But that's it. You, you, you can't bring him down in the box like that. You can't take one for the team like that. It was a clear trip. It was a clear penalty. Our penalty, where Fajiri scored from it, I think that... Um, there was a little bit of tugging at the arm, a little bit of pushing here and there. But was it clear and obvious for a penalty? I'm still undecided. I think we might have got away with one there. Um, and we got the penalty from something that may not have been considered a penalty before. But um, word actually on Fajiri Okunabiri. 
first half, he reminded me of Alexis Sanchez when he was at Arsenal in his prime Arsenal days. A little pest, you know, kept pressuring. When he was off the ball, he kept pressuring the Blackburn defence, kept pushing them back. And that's the, that's the frustrating thing. We had so many chances to get forward, but there was many, many occasions on the attack where we chose the wrong option. Second half, cross into the box. It was a low cross. It wasn't one of those lifted ones because Joe Wright, for the last few minutes, was playing as a centre forward for most of the, for the last few minutes. And instead of lifting a cross in where he can head it in, we instead do a small cross which doesn't suit that style of lofted ball. And, you know, I think Darren Moore, the line, the starting 11 I can get, but I think midfield was the main problem today. We just couldn't get most things in midfield when Blackburn had control of possession. And that was a big thing as well. We, did, we hardly had any possession. They're a championship team. They had more pressure. Fair enough. But we needed more possession in that game as well. But for Giri, like I said, going back to that point, Alexis Sanchez prime Arsenal days, a little pest, pressured off the ball. Um, just just kept pestering around that Blackburn defence. Um, and, you know, I don't think the substitutes did much either. Williams showed attacking intent, but we weren't exactly giving him any service, were we? Um, just overall, there was moments where we picked the wrong option. I think that's what we need to improve on. And squad depth. That I mean, that bench. I mean, we missed Whiteman today, Go, don't get me wrong. Uh, they sh there was a picture that I saw on the internet which showed Butler and Whiteman. I think there's word that we're signing Butler on a one-year deal uh, while he's Rovers Bells manager as well. Whiteman hopefully should be back for the Bradford game on September 8th in the Leasing.com trophy, a.k.a. the EFL trophy. Um, but, you know, it was clear we missed Whiteman, but that bench, so youthful. So youthful, and it's so clear we need squad depth. We need more signings. We've done great business so far, but we do need more signings, in my opinion. Butler would be it would be one. The two trellis forwards who didn't feature today because it's a competitive game after all. The two trellis forwards, I think them in the squad would be a good squad depth fit. Um, obviously, you know, we've signed two free forwards in the past, you know, with Bingham and Thomas. We ended up releasing both by January because they weren't showing enough. But, um, obviously the rumours is one that's Hines, they used to be a Watford. And I don't know who the other one is. So, um, you know, we'll have a look and see if we do sign them. But I think it's clear we do need a little bit more transfer business before the, the first competitive game of the season. Um, fair dues to Blackburn. Uh, I'll give them their credits. Uh, they did keep control of the match for most of the first half and obviously some parts in the second half towards the end as well. Uh, like the last 30 minutes of the second half, they kept control. Um, the moments where we attacked, coincidentally, was the bad moments in Blackburn's defence. Their, their defence was shaky. And, um, you know, I spoke about the Fajiri penalty. I spoke about their penalty that won them the game. Um... You know their other goal. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I looking back on it, I think it was a bit of a handball on the on the Armstrong shot, and then Rankin Costello brought it in anyway. So uh, you know that was you know routine. Um, the um, our second goal, Gomez. Like I told you, it was a good strike, but the rest of the game it was poor in my opinion. Overall, very very poor, too indecisive, and. Their first goal, the first goal they scored, actually, in the first goal of the game, was a free kick from Lewis Holtby. And, you know, we left a massive gap to the left of Bursic. Uh, Bursic left a massive gap in the left. And, you know, Holtby took advantage of that. Yes, he went to that side eventually. But it was a couple of in inches off finger-tipping it away from the cut for a corner. Um, but it was a good free kick in the end. But uh, good luck to Lewis Holtby. I know he got injured later in the first half, but uh, Joe Rothwell came on and he showed some positive signs. We saw the best and worst of uh, one of their left back, Amari Bell, today. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't good uh, in spots for Rovers, and that's the stuff we need to improve on. Uh, it was clear, though, there wasn't any attacking intent in the first half, hardly, but in the second half, uh, in the first 15 20 minutes, 25 minutes maximum, um, there were attacking signs for Rovers, and it showed that Darren Moore told the attacking team to improve, and they did. And then we swooped back into our shell, which allowed Blackburn to capitalise um, and take control of the game again. 
But without further ado, let's get into the player ratings to end the first match review of the season. Let's start off with our starting 11 that started the game uh, overall. Uh, so kicking off with our goalkeeper, Joseph Bursic. Uh, I'm going to give him a 6. I think that, you know, he made some decent saves, but he still let in three goals. So the free kick was kind of out of his control because it was a good free kick. Penalty, obviously, he went the opposite way, so you couldn't really tell with the penalty spot. And um, obviously the goalkeeper was distracted when Rankin Costello got the last touch after the block off the line. So you couldn't really do much about the goals. A little bit about the free kick, but not too much with the goals. Um, obviously needs to read the penalty a bit better, but like I said, not too much. But he did make some good saves, so I'm going to give him a good sixth. Above the average, but not too special. But it shows the signs that Bursic is a really good goalkeeper. Uh, back four that started, Halliday, again, I'm going to give him an average six. I think that there were signs where he got some attacking intent in him, but there was fouls that he gave away, you know, sometimes for no reason at all. Um, there was a couple of mistakes here and there, and just not, not the best game for Halliday. I know we can improve on that, though. Um, Centre-back positions, Anderson, again, I'm going to give him an average six. He did well, he was probably the better of the defenders, but... Uh, again, I think there was a couple of little mistakes here and there, a couple of big fouls that maybe won for the team or didn't have to make, so again, just nah, a bit off. Right, again, same story with Anderson, six, and for the same reasons, a couple of mistakes here and there, but overall, uh, just an average, de okay performance, nothing too special and nothing be below average. Cameron John, uh, I'm going to give him a five, and the reason why I'm giving him a five is he's not a left back! He's not a left back! Why are we playing him as a left-back when Danny Amos was there? He's a proper left-back on the bench. What, 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 what's the problem with that? I know Rhys James was not going to feature today. I, had, I knew that Rhys James wasn't going to feature today because he was injured. We need to get him back to full fitness for Bradford. But, you know, Danny Amos is a full left-back. John is being transitioned into a left-back. John is better as a centre-back. And, and if he keeps playing as a left-back, he's going to decline. And I do not want that for Cameron John because he deserves so much better. He was one of our most surprising signings of the season so far. Probably the most surprising signing of the season so far. And we need to, we need to treat him better. We need to do better. If he's transitioning into a left-back role, he needs to learn more qualities of a left-back. He cleared it away a few times. When other players didn't clear it properly, he cleared it away. Fair enough. But there was times as a left-back where he was cutting inside a little bit more as a centre-back. And to be fair, he did stay out wide for most of the game as that left-back option. But, you know, I think John just just he just didn't show much as a left-back. And I think he is better as a centre-back. Into the midfield, Gomez, despite the good goal, I'm going to give him a five. Again, he was probably our worst player on the field today. And he gave away the ball too many times. He gave away uh, passes way too many times. The goal was good. The goal was fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant goal from Gomez. Really good shot and good awareness to take the shot from distance and have the balls to take the shot from distance. But again, gives the ball away. Bad passes. Passes it to the opposition. He needs to get that out of his system. Otherwise, he's going to have another average season. Richards, I'd probably say he's one of the better midfielders we had today. I'm going to give him a seven. Taylor Richards on loan from Brighton this season. Especially in the second half, a two or three times in the second half, a couple of times in the second half, those through balls to the likes of Fajiri, Lakilo, what through balls they were. Absolute through balls, but again, we just didn't take advantage in the attack. Um, Taylor, who came off I'm um, in the second half, as well as Richards, I'm going to give him a seven. He showed pace, he showed pressure. There were a couple of hit things here and there, but you know what? Nothing too noteworthy. And I think that Taylor showed signs again this season that he's got a lot to offer. Lakilo, first competitive game in a Rovers shirt permanently. I'm going to give him a six. Um, now, it was rumoured, it was rumoured that Fajiri and Lakilo were going to start in the... The game against Wimbledon, we were going to play if it wasn't for COVID last season. So, you know, we could have seen more signs of them then. But, of course, it was their first, you know, start in a Rovers shirt, the Kilo. And, um, you know, I think I, I, it, there were signs. There was definitely signs he was on the attack. He was uh, working for the ball. He was absolutely going for it. But there was times when he, he, you know, he was on the end of a couple of good shots. Like... 
you know, when I say Lakilo is a six, he's teetering to a seven, but there's just a couple of little sloppy moments that just brings it down to the high six. Um, but just an okay game for Lakilo. An okay, and he did show great attacking intent. Um, Coppinger, um, I'm going to give him a six. Um, it, it, I think he looked like um, he gave the belt ball away a couple of times. He just... There was times where he was playing, he was playing like an 87-year-old um, on a booster bike, um, and you know I don't mean that with any disrespect at all. But there was times when he was just sluggish, he wasn't going to get the ball back, and you know I think there were. But to be fair, to give credit to Coppinger, there were times where I showed where he showed leadership qualities, and. Um, you know, there were times where Coppinger could have showed something, but again, it was just an average, okay performance. Nothing below average, but just average at best, unfortunately. Okunabiri, uh, I was teetering to a six, but I'm going to give him a, a small seven. Um, took the penalty well, got in the attacking space as well, but did he take his chances? I guess, to an extent, some sometimes. Um, but again, it, it, there was just signs where... Um, he was on the attack, but he couldn't take the chances. But to be fair, I'll give him credit, and this is why I give him a seven. Uh, he was there. He was always part of the attacks that we did pull off. Um, he was dancing and prancing around the defence. He was, you know, Lakilo put Travis on his backside. So, you know, Fajiri Okunobiri definitely skilled some players, but, you know, in terms of the basic football, I think in the attacking front, there needed to be more intent in the first half especially. Um, but for Jiri, had a better game than other players. Uh, moving into the subs, Ed Williams, the better of the subs for me. I'm going to give him a six. Uh, didn't show much in terms of chances, but there were signs there that he will show something this season. There was definitely signs in that game uh, when he came on. Um, Hassani, I'm going to give him a five. Gave a ball away a couple of times. Uh, just an average showing for me. Uh, and this just explains squad depth. I mean, Whiteman needs to come back into the side ahead of Gomez, play with Richards, have Williams on the bench, get Asani back in the youth, and just or just get him learning again with the uh, with the youth while he's not playing in the first team, and just 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 build that squad back up because you know it's clear it was clear in, in loads of moments in that second half when he came on that Hassani, even though he's an academy graduate now, um, along with Ben Blythe. He just doesn't show. Uh, well, there's, there's there's hardly any signs. I think there was just average showing from him. Finally, Danny Amos again. I'm going to give him a five as well. Ran for a bit, you know, did something a little bit, but again, just an average performance from Danny Amos. Uh, but there is signs from him. I've got feeling about Danny Amos. So there we go. That's the player ratings for today. Now to summarise this video, what, 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 how can I summarise? Um, Blackburn deserved it. I think there was, you know, the control in the in the amount of possession they had. Uh, the defense was shaky at spells in the second half for them, but and that's because when we attacked the best. But you know, they took advantage of the fact that you know they were controlling the game, they were playing with our players, they were putting good through balls through. Uh, that Dolan guy in the second half put in some very clever, very skillful runs to try and get past our defense. But uh, yeah, just. Um, you know, I think the free kick goal was good. The penalty was all right. It was just a normal penalty that sent the keeper the wrong way. Second goal before that, though, was scrappy. Absolutely scrappy. Uh, and like I said before, our goals, you know, Gomez's goal was an absolute stunner. And um, and that was the best thing I'd seen from him today. Other than that, like I say, he was poor. Um, and our penalty was, was, was decent as well. Um, good finish from Fajiri from the spot. And um, yeah, it, 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 I, it, we're out in the first round, second year running. And um, you know, even though I predicted a two-one win for Rovers, for our Rovers, I was optimistic. Don't get me wrong, I was optimistic, but you know, it was just I, I was just curious. I was curious to see if it would actually be a two-one win for us. But you know, even though we showed at times in this game that we could trouble Rovers. There were times where we stood back in our shell and we let them come at us big time. And the control they had in the possession in the game, that's what brought the pressure on. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll go again. I mean, you know, many Rovers fans will come out and say, oh, well, it's at least, you know, one more competition that we don't have to that we have to forget about. You know, at least we can focus on the FA Cup when it starts, the EFL Trophy when it starts, and the league when it starts. You know, at least we don't have the Carabao Cup to focus on. I wanted to win that trophy. I wanted that trophy to be 
part of our season. But, you know, we're out in the first round in the second year running. So uh, there's not much you can say, really. But co- compared to this time last year, at least we actually gave some fight. Um, like the Grimsby game. So, uh, and, we, and we lost to Championship Opposition. And the fact we gave Championship Opposition a good game at times... You know, show signs that we can develop as a club and we can push forward to the championship again. Um, and it doesn't exactly make it any better when you get your England C under 21 goalkeeper Bursic in the last 10 minutes of the match. And I saw the screenshot and I saw the video footage from the match showing it. He's absolutely screaming at his players. And I think he showed the hand gestures push up, push up. And we just stood back in our shell. So, you know, that game, I think it's just one we have to put aside. At least we didn't come out it with any injuries. Uh, and to be fair, the commentators did say um, on the Rovers side of this, the stream, I think that, you know, if we, kept, if we got an, another injury, then we would have been in trouble because we don't have reinforcement. And again, it flies down to squad depth. We need Butler in for a year. I think if we are going to sign him for a year, we need to bring him in. Two trials forwards, bring both of them in. The one low knee that we still need to hear back from. Hopefully that will be done before the Bradford game. Whoever that is. We've got two low knees out of the three. We need the last one now. And um, yeah, it should be interesting to see what we do between now and in about two weeks time when we uh, face Bradford. But thank you very much guys for watching this match review. I'll see you guys uh, in a couple of... Well, well the, the next batch preview will be in a couple of weeks time um, <clears throat> against Bradford. And... Um, up until then, we'll keep going with transfer reports, you know, any news that comes out from Rovers. And uh, I might do a separate video uh, giving you Darren Moore's press conference reaction to the to the result. So, uh, thank you very much, guys. I'm the CHALL. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to go watch the second half of the Community Shield. Goodbye. Rovers,